My family found hope in Wisconsin after living in a refugee camp in Thailand during the Vietnam War. It wasn't until I was in my late teens that I realized how big of a trailblazer my mother was and still is. The reason why my family had another chance at life? Because of her. In the dead of night, she snuck out to engrave our family's name on a list that would make us eligible to move out of a war-torn country. My siblings, all 10 of them, say that I am a replica of our mother. One of the many traits that my mom and I have in common is that we are dreamers. And people tend to make fun of us for having audacious goals. We're also challengers, daring ourselves and others to make a positive change every day. We are thrivers because if we find ourselves on the floor, we'll always stand back up even if we have to crawl first. The reason why my history of ditching classes in grade school exceeds the pages of a novel? Because of her. As soon as she could, my mom picked up a slew of jobs to make sure her family would not only survive, but also thrive. That also meant that I only saw her for a couple of hours a day. Starting at the age of seven, I cannot imagine living 180 days a year without my mom constantly by my side. How could any child live like this? I would ask myself. So I made the decision to play hooky whenever I could in order to have those few extra moments with this hardworking, caring, and loving human being. Little did I know that the days that I played hooky to stay with her were the days that I learned the most about what it takes to make your dream into a reality. Relatives and strangers alike would ridicule her desire to be a businesswoman. I watched her get hit by brick walls over and over again. And I also witnessed her climbing her way over these walls over and over again. From traveling around Wisconsin as a Mary Kay consultant, opening her own restaurant and a seamstress shop, to opening a fresh egg roll business at multiple farmers markets, my mom, who found refuge in America at the age of 29, she did it all. There would be people taunting her for trying to be someone in American society, trying to do something new in her life, for wanting better for herself. There was even a moment when a person tried to shut down my mom's agricultural business at the farmer's market. He would stalk our movements and not so secretly take photos of us while we were working. I remember the day that we had to pack all of our things at the market right in the middle of the day because we didn't have a food license. Wait, what? A food license, what was that? But you know what? Less than a month later, my mom was back at the market selling her famous egg rolls, and this time with food license. No matter who tried to shut her down in life, she always found a way to get back in the game and recharge to level 5,000. I developed many entrepreneurial skills through the observation of her hustle. But the most important skills that were transferred to me were the skills to be resilient, as well as to utilize my frustration as fuel to build my dream. I didn't pretend to be sick just so I could be with my mom. I was constantly bullied at school for looking different, speaking differently, and for being bold on what I want to accomplish in my life. It got to the point where I hated going to school. My mom showed me how to be resilient, and I took those memories into account. One day, a group of boys made fun of my little mustache in grade school. That day, I went home and observed my mom's face while she was working hard on her business. There she was, sitting at our dining table with her paperwork panned all over the surface her eyes hyper-focused on numbers that she just crunched out, and her lips slightly pursed. 
above those pursed lips looked like the same little mustache that those boys were teasing me about. The image of my mother working hard on her tasks and not giving a care about anything or anyone who does not mean well was empowering. Her natural God-given mustache had nothing to do with her ability to make waves. There were many days when my siblings and I did not have much to eat. Our family grew up on food stamps. When they could, my older sisters would use the little money that they had to buy us what seemed like treasures, McDonald's and Lunchables. <laughs> As my older sisters drifted away to college one by one, my mom was the last one keeping the tradition alive. Once a month, she'd come home with a bag full of summer sausages. <laughs> Kali was in such a treat. It wasn't until adulthood that I realized the resilience of this woman. The times she would tell me that she was full and that I should finish the rest of the food in our shared bowl, that was a lie. She wasn't full, but wanted to make sure that I was. Those memories saved me from placing an untimely end to my ever-growing story. And so, here I am, slowly building a reality where differences are a strength, no matter where you're from or how you look. And a few words that I would like to say in Hmong to my mother who is in the audience. Nia. Ying ji mwati ji halu tia te no, e yu la pita ka tsao ki hu. Vi mo ka, mo gu. Vi mo ka, gu chi chai le tu. Tia. Thank you.